table's been waiting breathlessly for you. Order something expensive. She looks like she could afford it. My name is Martha Harrington, Mr. Gunn. What can I do for you, Miss Harrington? Mrs. Harrington, people say you're for hire. Anything within reason. What about murder? That doesn't sound very reasonable. My husband was burned to death in a fire at his warehouse. The police say it was arson. I want you to find out who killed my husband, Mr. Gunn. That sounds like a job for the police. Normally, yes. There is a certain urgency attached to this. You see, I happen to be under suspicion. Which means you had a motive. I am the sole beneficiary of his life insurance policy. And what amount? $200,000. No offense, Mrs. Harrington, but under the circumstances, I'd be inclined to suspect you myself. There's $2,000 in this envelope. I'd like to know a little about your husband. Was he the type of man who might have burned down his own building to collect the fire insurance? I don't believe so. He was inclined to worry about the business. He mentioned last week that the inventory was overstocked. He was going to talk it over with his partner, Stanley Glidden. Mr. Glidden and your husband get along? To the best of my knowledge. Where can I reach you? My address is 1423 Hancock Road. I'm in the book. I'll see what I can do, Mrs. Harrington. But, Mr. Gunn. Yes? Aren't you going to ask me anything else? If my husband had any enemies? If he did, you would have told me by now. It's been nice meeting you, Mrs. Harrington. I'll be in touch. Is she? Martha Harrington. Who is she? Oh. Client? Hmm. Maybe that's what I should be. But I doubt if I could afford you. I'd work for a song. Hmm. What? I'm nosy, huh? Hmm. Kind of a pretty nose. You can aim better than that. Now, is that hello or goodbye? A little of both. You going to be late? Strong possibility. Wow. What? How'd I ever get along without you? Oh, come on. It can't be that bad. No, no. Things could get worse, and they will. Doesn't solve a thing. I kind of liked it. Look, if I'm not back by 3 o'clock, the key's under the mat. Pete. I'll keep a light under the coffee pot. It's automatic. Everything I know about the fire, 
You've read in the papers. Here's a report from the fire marshal. You comfortable? Very. Thank you. Swell. 54 single-spaced pages that adds up to two words, arson, murder. What do you know about Martha Harrington? She's young, pretty, frightened. She was sitting in Mother's less than an hour ago. No doubt waiting for you. How much did she pay you, Pete, to take the heat off? Which means the heat is on, huh? She's in the line of fire. What do you know about Harrington's partner, Stanley Glidden? He was in Philadelphia at the time of the fire. Was it Gladstone that said, beware of the suspect but the perfect alibi? That wasn't Gladstone, that was me. Have you talked to Glidden? A few words. No opinion yet. When do you plan to have an opinion? When I get enough evidence. I don't like to go around asking people if they committed murder. They usually say no. Any objection if I talk to him? If you get too interested, I'll get interested why you're so interested. That's usually the way it works, isn't it? Where does Glidden live? In the country. Where? Try the traveler's aid. You got a problem? He lives at 184 Glen Drive. You've been very helpful, Lieutenant. It wasn't my intention. Stanley Glidden? Yes. Peter Gunn. What can I do for you? I understand you're a man that carries a lot of fire insurance. You have any right to be on these premises. Show me your authority or get off. I thought you might be interested in a theory I've been kicking around. What theory? I understand business isn't too good. I don't know where you got your information, but it's entirely incorrect but you can't prove it because the books were burned. <laughs> I think I can guess your theory. I thought you would. Yes, you're suggesting that the building was burned deliberately. That's part of it. But in a deliberate arson case, there is no fire insurance. Looks like you killed your partner for nothing. That's a dangerous accusation. Or a simple fact. I think you missed again. I'm not at my best this evening. This is the first time I've been accused of murder. Probably be your last. It might interest you to know that I was out of the city the night of the fire. That, I think, they call the perfect alibi. Not if they can prove you hired somebody to burn the building. It's really a delightful piece of fiction. What do you intend to do with it? I'll shop around, see what the market is. <laughs> you know, you're very fortunate. Why? You guessed wrong. If you'd been right, I'd probably have shot you. I don't think so. What's to prevent me? How do you know I haven't gone to the police with this theory of mine? <laughs> They'd have been here by now if you had. Not without proof. Shoot me. They've got it. Uh, Mr. Gunn, it's quite dark out there. It'd be unfortunate if I mistook you for a prowler. Yes, it would. I've known prowlers to shoot back. Good night, Mr. Glidden.
your health, Pete. Fine, Ditto. And yours? Ditto. Been to any good fires lately? <laughs> I swore off after my last bust. But it ain't easy to kick. When you've touched off a fire, you're ten feet tall. You've created something. You've invented the Aurora Borealis. But it ain't starting them that gives you your kicks. It's watching. But it's risky to watch. Even if you're clean, you dustn't go near them. If they see your eyes gleam, you're as good as booked. No, you can't go near. It's pretty lonesome. Ditto, who touched off the Harrington fire? What fire? It was a marshmallow roast. You don't think it was a professional job, huh? Professional? Navy. No technique. What have you been up to these days? I am a manufacturer. Of what? Fireworks. Must be pretty dull waiting for the 4th of July. It's better than waiting for a parole date. Ditto. Let's say I wanted to have a building burned down. Where do I go? You might try across the river. Where? Penny Arcade on Post Street. And Pete, you better have your fortune told. Thanks. Ditto. Ditto sent me. Take the first door to the right. Tell me about this building of yours. Well, it's just a trap. I'd like to collect the fire insurance. Where's it located? Over on Grand Street. What's the address? 428. North or south? North. You should have been more careful with your address. Should I? 428 North Grand Street is a vacant lot. I just wanted to keep you on your toes. You know, Mr. Gunn, I don't think you came here to have a building burnt. If I did, I wouldn't hire you. You're too sloppy. What are you referring to? The Harrington Warehouse fire. Glidden had a pretty good thing going. Too bad you lost it up. You and Glidden tried to make it look like Harrington trapped himself in that fire. If you hadn't locked that screen door behind him, you might have gotten away with it. Steel screen doesn't burn. 
They sometimes melt. In a first-class fire, which yours wasn't, if I were Glidden, I'd ask for a refund. As a matter of fact, Mr. Glidden has asked something on me. What's that? He called me and told me about that visit you paid to his house. He suggested you might come here. And if you did, he advised me to kill you. I wouldn't recommend it. Hold it. Go downstairs, get everybody out of the arcade. Lock it up. not to call me here. Something's come up. It's important you get here as soon as possible. Where? The arcade. Well, what is it that's so important? Just get here and don't waste any time. I'm not in the court with this attorney. It won't work. There's evidence here, Mr. Glidden. Enough evidence to hang me. You too, for that matter. Well, what about him? Mr. Gunn, he's evidence too. If you burn this place, the police will ask questions. The police are going to ask questions anyway. Only I won't be here to answer them. Why did you ask me to come here? You, Mr. Glidden are the last link between me and a Harrington fire. When the police find you here, they'll think you started it. Find me here?
coffee's hot. I made sandwiches. Do you know what time it is? Sure. I've been counting the minutes. You look beat. Beat is the word. Well, you just curl up and relax and enjoy the fire. Do I have to? What kind of remark is that? Nothing personal. <laughs> 